just rifled through all the things that you've said about Jared Goff in my head. Tons. The Lions, they get the win, and they improve to 3-1, and one, and they sit at the top of the NFC North. We were trying that on for size yesterday when yeah. we were talking about the Lions, and now it's a real thing. Jason, it was a primetime win. It was. It was on the road. What do you think about the Lions? Uh, the Lions fired up. It went all downhill for the Packers as soon as Lil Wayne was running out of the team. Oh, team. really? It was, yeah, well, it's Why? not a boxing match. What are we doing? We got Lil Wayne. He's way down here. The players are way up there. It was just like, I'm watching, like, re rewind that? What was that? But this Lions team, I mean, you just talked about Jared Goff. You talked about resiliency. Yesterday, you talked about his story. You said this was a guy that was on top of the world, opportunity to win the Super Bowl. Then he's traded to Detroit. And then you watch him last night. The way the game starts, he throws a terrible interception Rudy Ford, he brings it back, and you're like, all right, this Packers team, they're ready to go. It's at Lambeau, second play of that drive. Aiden Hutchinson sacks Jordan Love. They end up kicking a field goal from the same exact spot they got the ball. They gained zero yards. This Lions team in the first half put the game to rest. That very next drive, we see a double move by Amon Ross St. Brown. Leaves Rasul Douglas in his steps. Shoes are still there. He's running barefoot trying to get to him in the end zone. How bad he shook him on that double move. And then they just kept going for the rest of the half. It was unbelievable. You're watching two teams and you're just like, I didn't realize the Lions overmatched the Packers this bad. Look at these first half stats. Points are one thing. Total yards. Green Bay had 20 three yards in the first half. And you guys just said it. It's highlight. It showed it. The last play of the first half yeah. was a sack. They're attempting to throw a Hail Mary, and they can't even get can't the ball that. off to see what they can do with it. The Lions were so dominant in the first half. And, yes, there was a little bit of a comeback in the second half. Lions fans are a little pissed off. They're waiting for the shot clock. They're waiting for the yeah. buzzer to go off, a 44-yard uh -huh. pass. And they're like, ah, I think the quarter was over. So a lot going on. The Lions dominated that one from beginning to end. Primetime game, mm -hmm. national TV in the home where they have lost for the last three decades. And they go in there and they absolutely own it. And by the end of it, not only is Jared Goff talking that bleep, it's all Lions fans in Lambeau celebrating. And they're there to the end of the game. It's quite a surreal scene if you've been watching football in recent history. And yet... The Packers did come back. They cut this game to 10, and I thought the drive that will define this Lions team this season, their toughness, their physicality, was the drive during the fourth quarter. It's lost in the highlights. They get the ball at their own 20, and they just decide to shove the ball down this Packers defense throat, basically saying, we are the new heavies in this division. It's no longer you guys. We did it last year in week 18. We'll do it again. And it was pass. It was pass. It was run. This pass right here on a crucial play, no problem. Ben Johnson drives it up. They drive all the way down the field, and they eat up the clock. They totally take the soul of the Packers out of their bodies. They line up for the field goal. The field goal, obviously, there's the penalty. Then they get this one here, Montgomery up the gut. Look at this drive to put a statement, to put an exclamation point on this game to end it. 14 plays, 75 yards, takes nine minutes, and it basically sucks the life out of the Packers. They had a comeback in the works. They were down 10. There was a chance. No, 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 no. We're the better team. We're going to stomp on your throats in your building. That's what the Lions did, and that was the Lions all night, and that's what they want to be. Like, they don't want to be this finesse team mm -hmm. that puts up 45 and gives up 42. They want to be a team that can do ball control when they have to be, and they can just beat you that way. The last two games... This team, it's not the razzle-dazzle Lions that yeah. we thought we were going to get. It's shove the ball down your throat, play good defense, get out of there with a victory. Uh, they absolutely own the Packers. They are clearly mm -hmm. the number one team in the NFC North as we start week five. It's, they're exciting for more reasons than just their record. When you watch them, they're clearly well-built. Like, they just have good personnel. And they showed Brad Holmes a lot on the broadcast last night. Mm -hmm. Their D-line is really good. Their O-line is really good. Like, I remember the, the bad Packers teams, they'd have, like, really famous wide receivers. You know, like, that's great. Like, those those are just fancy parts. Like, this team has a core. And on the personnel, I think there's a fascinating thing where everyone was like, what the hell? Jamal Williams had this many touchdowns last year. The David Montgomery thing is really awesome. Mm -hmm. So David Montgomery, that might not blow your hair back. He was a pretty good Bears running back. The Bears are like, we're good. And the Lions, I think, we're going to take him. So David Montgomery this year has five touchdowns. The Chicago Bears have five touchdowns alone in three games. Huh. Also, this is here's the changing of the tide. Bring up the stats on Montgomery. This is the, he had played the, the Packers a lot. With the Bears, he was 0-7. 64 yards a game and two touchdowns. <laughs> With the Lions, he's 1-0, 121 and three. He never beat the Packers a single time in all those years with the Bears. Shows up in Lambeau, has the game of his life. The Bears let him go. The Lions said, we'll let the other guy go over him. It's like, they're making the right choices. Mm. 
Like they're, they're coming up, they're rolling the dice and it's coming up exactly what they want. That's just so new and it's so fresh and you watch them and it, whether it's Hutchinson or Penny Sewell or all these guys, they're a little bit bullyish, they're a little bit mean and they out physical the Packers. It's not like this cool Calvin Johnson down the field, Matthew Stout. It's just like we're tougher than you. We run it a lot. Montgomery's a big part of that and they are by far, by far the best team in the NFC North. It's really, really cool. Montgomery had a great quote in the what locker room. They asked him and he's like, my son has never seen me beat the Packers. Mm. I wanted my son to see. Right. He's got a you know, he's got a three year old, four year old son, and yeah, he saw Pretty him beat cool. the Packers. And, and what's wild when, when Montgomery signed with the Packers yeah. or with the Lions, excuse me, you didn't expect this to be the run game experience, I think, because of the Jameer Gibbs drafting. Like you just thought it was gonna be this thing that we didn't know about, and now it's feels a little old school at times the way they're running the ball. Mm. The defensive line from the get go. That that was unbelievable. They sacked Jordan Love five times they picked him off twice he never had time to make any good decisions Aiden Hutchinson was the one to watch but Peter's guy Peter I was trying to remember Aleem McNeil was he on your last year, last players year. to watch last, last year, year yes and he had an okay season yes. but this year he's really breaking out yes and the way the line is putting things together and just rushing guys and collapsing down in on the pocket it shouldn't surprise us that the Steelers and the Cowboys are the league leaders right now in sacks it's like 13 and 12 the Lions are right there they're at 13 already I know they played last night but what they are piecing together in terms of making the quarterbacks uncomfortable and in their division Kirk Cousins should be worried the Vikings should be worried the way their offensive line has played. Justin Fields should be scared. This Lions defensive line is remarkable. I was thinking about Uncle Lenny this morning and how Love it's him. been. The, saying three decades as it pertains to the Lions is like such a fun and sexy way to talk time. about them. It's a long time, <laughs> both since their last playoff win. Are we now there, three and one? Are we feeling like they're in? Are we feeling good about this team on September 29th? I feel pretty good. I woke up to a text this morning from a Lions fan. I'm friends with a Mike, Mike from Michigan. And he was taking me through the story of the season from a Lions fan perspective. Mm -hmm. And he said, we had the biggest home game in years, that home opener, and we lost. And it was a little bit of a here we go again. Mm -hmm. And it was fool's gold. And maybe that Chiefs win was fake. I, I, I'm there. I said it already, the way that they're built. And I have to tell you, I think Lions fans are in this position right now where they're like, they're really happy. They kind of don't know what to do with themselves.